driving over to Oakland to pick up some of the bikes, hanging out with Doug, going across doing? the Dumbarton Bridge. It's a pretty awesome place here. So you do this every time you go to get some new Velo Minis? Yeah, there's two major ports on the west coast, Long Beach and Oakland, so we're going to the Oakland uh, port to pick up the Velo Minis. Yeah, man. It's pretty neat being this close to a, a big city, but then kind of having nature around, like the, the bay and everything. It's true. It's one thing about the Bay Area, there's always things to do, and you can pretty much get any type of weather you want within about a half hour of driving or cycling. I think part of Doug's strategy was to bring me along so we could hit the carpool lane. Was it? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I was excited to see what this is like. I've never been present uh, unloading bikes when they're being shipped over. Uh, from directly from the manufacturers. Where where are these made, Doug? They're made in Suzhou, which is a modern uh, production facility uh, outside of uh, Shanghai. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Have you been there before? Yeah, it's a fantastic facility. Uh, dealt directly with the president of the company. Uh, we worked on making some improvements on the original design, working on the design patent for the U.S. And uh, I'll be able to show you a couple of the production shots uh, when we get back. Yeah, okay, I think I might mix yeah. some of those in because you've been over there, you've taken yep. some video and stuff. Cool. Yep. Let's do it. that they like do for your, when they get your bikes off the ship? Yeah, those are the uh, containers, the cranes, the ships go yeah. right up to the dock. You can probably see one over there. I heard that uh, George Lucas used to live in this area and those white cranes inspired the AT-AT yeah. walkers. Did you hear that? I've heard that too. Yeah, that is so, and you can see it, like when you look at them from a distance. Are we gonna get closer to those? Yeah. We are? Okay, so. cool, I'm just getting excited. We're at the shipyard. Logistics company is behind me and Got another view of those cranes. It's really cool. If you actually come in here, it's made of like redwood, kind of old army barracks apparently, and there's this cool mural. I thought this was really kind of neat when we were waiting earlier. Doug's over here just doing the paperwork. How's it going, man? You get some help? My custom pen. Oh cool. yeah, I like that. <laughs> we lost our friend John, I guess he- He finally got his uh, pickup. Finally got his stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Look at the... That might be oak from like the actual oak trees in Oakland. Okay, I'm huddled in the van. Doug is out there and we backed up really close. So they're gonna bring out the pallet shortly. There they are. It's the first batch. These things are so small and light. Um, you know, normally e-bikes are like 50 plus pounds. Oh, we got our first load. Yep. Pretty full. Doug, that was awesome. Need to see how this is done, <laughs> how they get here. Is that the Bart? Yeah, it's Bart. It Bart. from Fremont, San Francisco. I've had some interesting experiences on the Bay Area Rapid Transit. Have you? No. You ever ride it? Uh, a couple of times, not too often. It yeah. It more often. That's right. The problem right. is it doesn't go to San Jose or Santa Clara. Ah. Uh, so you have to drive up to um, basically Fremont or Daly City to get it. They are bringing it down to us though. Oh, that'd be great. I've been looking at that truck up there. We're almost caught up to it, but it has this cool wind fairing thing on the back. So it makes it more aerodynamic and at high speeds. They even have fairing along the bottom so air doesn't get sucked underneath. And then it had flat hubcaps. Speaking of efficient transportation, like e-bikes. Exactly. Next I have to get my electric van to go pick up our electric bikes. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, I had Doug take me to the train station in Campbell, California. This is a perfect setting, I thought, for the Velo Mini Plus, because it's just so small. Like, look at that, this is it. It's completely encased in the canvas bag. This thing even has backpack straps, so you could wear it around if you wanted. You could pick it up. I did some, some measurements earlier today. Uh, the bike weighs 29 pounds, 
I mean, that's pretty impressive. A lot of the ones I see end up weighing like 45, 50, even more than 50 pounds. So this is really one of the lightest. He was telling me you could actually take the seat off as well and stow it in there. Um, but I wanted to be able to, you know, just show you how it, how it looks. And sometimes on trains they have special like bicycle cars and you, and you can put your bike on, but being able to keep it with you and maybe even set it next to you on the train or hide that it is a bike. Cause in some cases it's like, oh, a bike, you know, what's the deal? That, that's pretty cool to me. That's a really um, exciting feature. And, and here's the bike completely folded up, as compact as it gets. You can see it's got the Welgo plastic folding platform pedals. Seat is all the way down, really long seat post, 503 millimeters. Most of them are like 350. So it's really long. And when it's all the way down like this, it locks it so that that rear swing arm can't come undone. The tires, touch just a little bit right there. But I noticed that if you lift it up by the, the seat, you can actually wheel it around like this, which is kind of nice. And then of course there's the, you know, just lift at the center, 29 pounds, really, you know, pretty impressive how light this thing is. There's the folding telescoping height stem, the other folding pedal. I've got all the measurements back at the site so you can get an idea for how long it is, how wide it is. And here's the train. So this just came by earlier and it was just like, wow, you know, imagine picking that up, taking it to your destination. This is a last mile electric vehicle. Doug, would you go ahead and sure. maybe help me unfold this? Yep. First thing you do is just lift the seat up. Here. Look at the chain too. This is one of the coolest things. It has a plastic guide, so it really hugs the chain on both sides. It's not gonna drop off very easily. It did, you know, it looks a little sloppy when it's in that folded position, but we've folded and unfolded this a bunch of times today. Never fell off. It's the handlebars. There we go. And then the kickstand. Yeah, I love the fact that it has a kickstand. It's not like super adjustable, but um, yeah, kind of keeps it, keeps it from, from falling down. There's the last pedal. Oh yeah, and then the telescoping stem. This is the cool thing. When you, whenever you have a small form factor bicycle of any kind, folding otherwise, it, this only comes in one size. And I measured the, the seat tube right here just 10 inches and the standover height, uh, it was about 18 inches. So this is gonna be approachable for people, but when you bring that seat all the way up to the min insertion height, there's like a little stamp right there. Look at that. You know, if you're someone who does have longer legs, this, this can still handle you. And the maximum rider plus cargo weight capacity is about 260 pounds. Part of the reason that it is so capable is it's got these 13 gauge, a little bit thicker spokes, double walled reinforced rims. And a lot of times when you, when you make a smaller wheel, they are a little bit stronger. It can support a little bit more weight. Uh, the, taro, the tires on this, they aren't super wide and they're rated 40 to 65 PSI. Uh, let's see here that yeah 16 by 1.5 that's small a lot of the bikes that I see it's like 18 and then you jump up to 20 24 26 27 and a half 28 this is at the smaller end which means that you know the attack angle is really high and it can fall into grooves and stuff so if you're crossing railroad tracks you want to make sure you you go at a 90 degree angle so you don't get you know caught off guard but it was a little bit more comfortable than than I expected I came into this knowing like okay smaller wheels narrower tires but this little rubberized piece back here where Doug folded it a minute ago, it, it acts like a little bit of a bumper. The fork is steel. Steel has a little bit of a, maybe vibration dampening quality. It's not super long, but it does well. And I think the saddle, the saddle is, is really nice. Like it actually feels, it feels great. Um, that took a lot of the, the vibration out of, of the ride for me. And then 14 mile per hour top speed versus 20 on most like full size electric bikes. That's part of why it, I think it feels comfortable because you're, you're just not going as fast. You don't get the jittery feeling as much. Just make sure that you know, you've got everything locked here. It does have that extra safety pin. You've got the telescoping stem with this quick release lever. Make sure that's tight enough. And I love that it's sliced. So this isn't a circular tube that can rotate. You're not gonna get that extra plane of, of um, I, I, don't, I don't know, weakness. Um, it keeps it straight. I definitely appreciate that. Also, I think this was 31.8 millimeters on the seat post diameter, so a little bit thicker. Coming back to the strength, the battery is built right into the frame right there. So a lot of times with some of the older folding electric bikes, um, you would have the battery on a rear rack and it would 
it, it just shows, right? People know it's an electric bike and it's a little bit rear heavy. In this case, it's built right into the, into the tubing and there's only one, but there is this extra reinforcement point. It might act as a handle. I've been lifting right here because it's really well balanced. The motor up front, that's 250 watts, nominal, really small, relatively lightweight, silver, so it blends in. And again, just taking a step back here, you really don't notice that it's electric. And I, I appreciate that. It, it's already eye-catching because it's folding, but you don't need to scream the other piece. One, one thing this does not have is a removable battery, at least for regular use. You can take this out and Doug has, uh, you know, we've brought the full setup over here with a trunk bag accessory that's 29 bucks. And then this really cool trailer, I'm gonna get into that more later, but I wanted to show you, this is what the battery looks like. Right, look at that, very cool. It's only three pounds. And this uses the uh, higher energy density cells. What were those called, Doug? 26650. 26650, yeah. lithium ion cells. Long lasting, relatively lightweight, spreads the weight out across the frame. So it does feel pretty balanced. You're already dealing, whenever you're with smaller wheels like this, the ride can feel a little squirrely. And that's part of the reason I think they limit the top speed. But the, the lower speed is gonna help you go a little bit further. And the motor has a pretty good mechanical advantage because it's turning a smaller wheel. So there's a lot of benefits that might go unspoken or unrecognized if you're not familiar with electric bikes. Um, so a hub motor makes sense in this case. Frees up the rear end. This is a single speed drivetrain. It's got a unique chain, a little bit shorter lengths. Um, yeah, the guides and everything I talked about keeps it out of the way. It hasn't been really noisy either. And we're gonna ride it in a little bit, uh, but I wanted to talk again about the battery. This is 24 volts, 10 amp hours. So 240 watt hours, that's on the smaller side. A lot of electric bikes are like 350 watt hours, 36 volt, 10 amp hours. So this one being 24 volt, you might not get quite as much like power, raw power, but because of the mechanical advantage and the lower speed, this actually feels very satisfying. It's pretty zippy and the lower top speed extends the range. So those are all the thoughts I had on the drive system. Eight magnet cadence sensor right here. So you can see there's these little dots. Those are magnets, they pass that little red sensor and it's pretty responsive. There's a little bit of a delay when you start and when you stop, but the brake levers, these are whooshing, they have motor inhibitors. So anytime you pull those, even if you're just holding it gently like that, the motor is completely under control. It's not gonna get away from you. We got a bit of wires up here extra because of those motor inhibitors and the display. You know, at some point it's like, well, you can do wire wraps and stuff, but I think they're a little bit easier to work with here. You fold the bike, so you can only do so much, I guess is what I'm saying. And then we've got here, yeah, Yin Ing, a linear pull. Some people call these V-brakes. That's a Shimano branded term, but yes, they're, they're kind of V-brakes. We've got a second one in the rear. They work pretty pretty well. If If you're really going fast and maybe you weigh a lot, those can heat up the rim a little bit. And for mountain bikes and stuff, they don't use those anymore. They use disc brakes because it could actually melt and sort of pop the inner tube. But for something like this, it's so small, you know, I, I don't think it's a problem. And they, they actually stop me really well. There's another angle on that kickstand and then the integrated rack. I like this thing. It's got little bumpers, rubber bumpers on the bottom so that when you fold it up, it rests on those. It doesn't scrape these up. Again, aluminum alloy shouldn't have a lot of rust. The only steel thing is like the spokes, stainless steel, uh, some of the parts in the motor and then that front fork. Anyway, the rack has standard gauge tubing. It should work with a number of panniers and things, but a lot of panniers are too big. And if you hung them off the side, see how the pedal comes right here, it passes pretty close to that rack. So I think the trunk bag is the best option. And we've got that over there again, 29 bucks, not bad. It's enough to carry your charger, which I'm doing right now, your wallet, some of those other things, you could just Velcro it on, nice to have. And then there are a couple of eyelets for potentially adding fenders, but you need really custom fenders. Doug said in the future, there might be some more upgrades. This is a product that's been evolving over the years. When did you start Velo Mini? First started in 2010. Wow. We introduced our first Velo Mini. And uh, from that one, we found that people wanted a little bit lighter and a little bit more power and a little bit bigger tires. The original Velo Mini had 12 inch tires, so we went up to 16. Okay. Once you get up to 20, as you said, then you're starting to get in the 40, 50 pound weight. Yeah. So that's why we stuck with the 16. Plus it folds really compact and it's easy to put in the back of a car. I've seen some of those other like kick scooters and there's, there's this whole like last mile, right. what are you gonna use? But those aren't necessarily as comfortable and you can't haul a lot unless you sure. wear a backpack. We get a lot of people coming into uh, the store because we also work with EOV Motors looking for first mile, last mile. And 
the only alternative to this are the kick scooters. Hmm. Uh, they weigh as much, sometimes more, uh, and they have about the same amount of power. People don't feel as comfortable because you're talking about really small tires. Really now, small tires, yeah. Six, eight inches that feel everything. So a lot of times they'll come in thinking they want a scooter, then they'll see the Velo Mini and huh. go, okay, this is actually what I need. And one of the things I love is that it actually has a 12 LED integrated headlight. So this one does run off the main battery pack and it has a light sensor. So anytime it's dark, that comes on. It's not gonna happen right now because it's a beautiful day, but that's wonderful. Just great to have a built-in safety. Uh, you know, and if you're someone who has a boat or a private plane or an RV and you're taking this to places, I always wear a backpack and I put like a little light on the backpack or my helmet. Try to keep the light high, especially if you're in a place you're not familiar with. You're around quiet vehicles. I think this is a light rail, so the train's really quiet. You just, you want to be seen. You want... So we come up to the grips. These are standard rubberized grips. I love that they match, even though this side is a twist throttle. There's a two-step on-off process, which is like, eh, you know, I prefer one, but this isn't too bad. Get this on switch, see if we can see those. There we go, got some shade. Five bars on that battery indicator, 20% increments, roughly. And then low, medium, high pedal assist. You just press plus, plus, plus. Got blue and red. It looks pretty nice. It's easy to reach. It keeps things cheap, right? That's, that's part of this. This product costs $12.95, that's the MSRP. Um, why don't we go over to the trailer, Doug? Is that cool? Yeah. You wanna... We can grab this and just wheel it over. Because there are quite a few options. Oh boy. So before you wheel the bike around, one of the things that I've noticed is when they're brand new, even though you can pedal backwards, there's a little bit of stick happening and this is a cadence sensor. So if I just start wheeling it, it could take off. You're gonna wanna arrow down all the way out of power pedal assist, maybe even turn it off because when you wheel it, see how the pedal's moving? Over time, that'll stop and it won't stick as much, but these are brand new units. So that's one of the extra, like be careful. Same with the twist throttle. If this was on and I, I just grabbed it, it could take off on me. Thankfully, it's not too heavy. So here we are over at the accessories, XLC trunk bag. Inside, we've got the charger. Love this thing, it's really compact. It only weighs one pound, two amps, which is standard, but when the battery capacity is so, you know, efficient like this, it, it only takes, you were saying, like two and a half hours? Yeah, two hours, two and a half hours. For not bad, yeah. not bad. And a lot of times, if it's completely out, the full, full, first half is even faster. So 45 minutes, you could be at half the battery. Um, then this trailer, can you just tell me again what, who makes this and what's the yeah, story so on this? this is a uh, T1 th uh, trailer, a sharper bike, sells it in the US. It's nice because it's made in Taiwan, weighs 11 pounds, and it's basically what we consider an urban trailer because you can use it to go food shopping, uh, groceries, uh, pick up any accessories you want. If you're on a campground, you can go get your supplies. Yeah, uh, some it, firewood in there. It fits on almost <laughs> any bike. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, here's, yeah. here's the so point. It just opens up there. There is an extra safety, which we didn't put on, which hooks up. A little just, strap, just in case you need to. a leash. And then you just pick it up and that's mm. it. Oh, and you can wheel it around too. You can wheel it around. Look at that. Uh, some people actually use this for maintenance because they put all their tools in here. They go like in a school setting, they'll actually go up to the class and then take all their tools right into the class. Huh, so you could lock the bike at the rack and then you've got yeah. a cargo trunk. Do you know what the weight capacity on this thing is, Doug? 50 pounds. Yeah, 50 pounds. 50 pound capacity. Uh, completely folds up, which I can show you. So Let's you do that and I didn't want to miss out. Safety again, look at this. It comes with a yellow safety flag. Where does that go? Uh, back in Oh, right there. Yep. Okay, there we go. Sweet. Comes with flag. It also comes with a cover. So once you fold it all up, if you want to put it in for check baggage, mm -hmm. it protects all the metal pieces. Nice. It completely covers it up. That is cool. This is a really great uh, trailer that is really expensive. So I think it was three ninety five. Is that right? I, you know. You made the point earlier, we were talking about luggage and I was like, no, that's a lot. But when you spend money on regular luggage, like travel luggage, it costs about the same. And this thing has some pretty cool folding um, designs. Go ahead, you can. Yeah, so uh, you can use it like this. Uh, what I do sometimes if I'm traveling with the Velo Mini is I'll put it in the case and then put it across. Oh, so it's my like luggage in here. right up here. Right, cool. and then when you're ready to fold it, basically you just pull these up. These are due too, so they're a little bit tight. Yeah. And then that oh. tucks out of the way. Look at that. 
Yeah. Nice. Wow, so it gets really, well, let's leave it. I wanna, oh. I, I came over here pulling that trailer, so I wanna show that again on video. Oh, okay. Um, we can hook it back yeah. up. Oh. And it has a uh, strap over here, put it in. Then you have the case that goes over the whole thing. You just put it in check bag. Sure. Bicycle trailers come in all different shapes and sizes. There's like the burly trailer where you pull kids along. There's the animal trailers. Um, need to see one that kind of matches this bike. It's really not that wide either. So when I was coming over here, I, I was a little worried I was gonna hit posts and the wall and, and it actually, it tracks nicely. That's it, there you go. That quick. Well, Doug, you've heard me talk about this thing. Yeah. Have I missed anything? No, I think you covered it. Uh, it's a great first mile, last mile bike. And the reason we uh, started selling the Velo Minis is because I've been selling electric bikes since 2008. Mm -hmm. And there is a spot for what I call subcompact electric bikes. Uh, something that you can carry like a scooter, put it in your car, leave it in the car if you want, go around the park. So you always have it available when you want to use it. Okay. Well, this is a review. So I'm going to, I'm going to say things that I feel like, what are, what are the limitations on this thing? Well, there's the weight limitation, but 260 pounds, a lot of electric bikes, it's 250 or 300, you know, it's, it's kind of that range. Right. The distance I would say is the biggest. Uh, we do have, um, Oh, I didn't talk about yeah, that. Like yeah, so eight to is, 20 miles. This is, uh, we're saying up, up to 18 miles. Up uh, to 18, distance, right? Yeah. If you turn the yeah. bike off, this thing goes and exactly. goes, man, no problem. Too, right. But yeah. Okay. So the other things I noticed is that the plastic pedals, they're not quite as grippy or as stiff. The power transfer isn't as good as if you had alloy pedals, but right. those don't fold a lot of times and they add weight. Let's see what else. Um, yeah, the walking thing. Like if you're walking it, it can take off on you. So you notice we put this for now until it breaks. Oh in yeah. It away. Look at that. Turn power off when not on to avoid bike accelerating. That happened to me earlier. And then class two sticker. So we're in California. We got to have that. That's nice. Um, I guess that's it. We'll, we'll go on some rides. We're, okay, and we, there was go. a hill, right? We're gonna take me on a hill. It's a steep hill. We'll really see how that does. <laughs> pretty well with the trailer. I've noticed that the kickstand can be difficult to reach because of the hitch and everything, but that works well enough. Sometimes I'll park it and the bike will fall over because of the, the kickstands. Just, there's not a lot of space on it and maybe the weight of the trailer or something like that. Otherwise, it, it stands okay. And um, yeah, the turning radius is good too. Thing to watch out for when you're riding uh, with the trailer or with with the, even the seat is just get those quick release um, collars get those tight because sometimes the wheels on the trailer can start to fold up or the seat post I noticed it could twist a little bit okay Doug we found ourselves a nice smooth piece of tarmac this is where we can race around get some fun shots right. uh, you know I only weigh 135 pounds so I've got the bike with the trailer probably about 30 pounds in there Doug's camera Got the extra, you know, the trunk bag with the, with the charger. I just wanted to take off, you know, shine the camera around and give you an idea of, of how responsive it is. And then maybe you can catch up with me in a second. And sure, sounds we'll, good. We'll take a little ride on the trail. Okay, so right now we're on the highest level of pedal assist. The battery's completely full. I'm going to start with the throttle. Uh, and, you know, one of the things with a front wheel drive bike like this, it adds a little bit of weight that can impact handling a little bit, but this is a, it's very little weight. I think this was the, the best idea versus complicating the drivetrain in the rear with that chain and everything. But you can spin that tire if, if it's maybe dusty or wet. I haven't had a, a big issue with that, but that's something that I call out with front wheel drive. So I'm going to gun it. Oh, there's a little bit of spinning happening. Not too bad. This is full power. And it's worth noting that full power 
with twist throttle, it doesn't take you as fast as with pedal assist. So when I start pedaling, I'm gonna get even more power. You know, it's feeling pretty good. I'm riding with one hand here. I got the trailer. You can see this thing bouncing around a little bit, but it's not bad. Doug, you wanna zip by me? Yeah, this is pedal assist. There he goes. And Doug, I think he's like 165, 170. Lead on. A little bit of rattling going on, but you can see that, you know, it handles it pretty well. And my body position is, is relatively upright, so it's fairly comfortable. I can spot the trail ahead, talk to my friends. So from this angle, you should be able to hear the motor starting and stopping. There's a bit of a delay when you're using pedal assist and hopefully you'll be able to see my legs too. But of course with the throttle, it's really smooth and you just, you get power on demand. So there's that delay. But I must say, that gear that they chose, it, it feels pretty comfortable at low speed and at higher speed, you know, up to that 14. I'm in the highest level of pedal assist now, so it's loud and strong. It's not the biggest hill in the world, but we just zipped right up it. I used the throttle the whole time. It worked pretty well. That's, I think that's, we've done a really good job. I'm glad, it's always fun to meet with the people behind the products and get the story, the origin story and everything. Doug, I really appreciate this. This is the Velo Mini Plus. For the full write up on this, all the specs and other measurements, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun, ride safe. I just folded my bike down. It's pretty impressed. Sometimes it's a real hassle and you're just lifting and balancing, but it was quick. I'm gonna watch Doug do his now. Go ahead, bud. Get the trailer undone. Sure. Just push on it. And then he turns it to the right a little bit because yeah, you fold the handlebars down. Otherwise it touch. Yep. This goes all the way down, box it in place. Squeeze that. Oh, I didn't do my pedals. Not quite done. Yeah, I put the kickstand down. There. There you go. That's it. It's fast. Yep. Not it's bad. Lift it with one hand. Got these nice packing blankets. We easily fit both of these Vela Minis in the back and that trailer earlier. Because again, this, this kind of folds down. It's so cool. And these are pneumatic too. These, yep. they have little valves so they're a little bit more comfortable and they sort of cushion your luggage I guess. Could put Pongo in there. Exactly. <laughs> tell them about Pongo. Pongo is uh, Doug's puppy. I've been taking him for a walk every once in a while. Had a good, had a good time. Sweet. Where'd he go? Thanks man. I was waiting for evening because I wanted to show the lights. Just give you an idea of how, how bright they are. It's not bad, you know, that's, that's a small rear light. It does have flashing mode. And then the headlight is cool. Once you've turned the bike on, you've powered up the display. It has that light sensor. So right now we're just at, at kind of the evening time where the sun is going down and the light doesn't come on until a little bit more shade. There we go, you see it lighting up? It's pretty cool, pick the perfect time. I was really excited to do that. And again, 12 LEDs on the side. This is where you plug it in. This is where you charge it. It's got a little rubber cap. A little bit annoying getting that thing to 
plug in and stay straight, once you do it a couple times, it does go in pretty quickly. It works well enough and it's out of the way. A lot of times these e-bikes have a, a charging port right here by the crank arms that can kind of get bumped. I feel like this is a good location for it. Right up here with the light, it's pretty well protected. And then the carriers, they also have reflectors built in. So that XLC, this is a Shimano branded bag. It's got some striping on the back, on the sides. And then the trailer as well. Big reflector on the side, silver accents on the tubing, and a big red reflector down low in the back. So it's done a good job. That's the kind of thing you want if you're in a location that maybe you're not so familiar with, you're riding around cars in an urban environment. It's good to have.